Kurt recording. Ha ha ha! Look at that. And then I just go back into here. Fantastic. So what you were experiencing, I'm sorry, is everybody prepared? Or should we, do you want to take another moment? <laughs> All right, I'm just going to get into it then. Uh, you are in. 1A, which apparently you cannot tell because they're only seen by me. Uh, Rot Iron Gate hangs... Excuse me. Rot Iron Gate hangs with hinges on one side. And a lock on the other fills the archway of the stone, po stone portico. The gate is unlocked. It's rusty hinges. Yes, you've already done. You pulled it open. Oil lamps hang from the portico ceiling by chains, flanking the set of oaken doors that open into a grand foyer. The grand foyer, of course, would be up here. Bing! Um, hanging on the south wall of the foyer, which would be... Now, I need to point this out somewhere here. I don't know. Oh, at the very bottom of this picture, you'll notice the, the north is actually to the left. That is how they decided to do this. Oh. Yeah, it's a little confusing. So when I say the south side of the wall, I actually mean over on this general side. There. Um, hanging on the south wall of the foyer is a shield emblazoned with a coat of arms. That coat of arms is a stylized golden windmill. Uh, it is flanked by framed portraits of stony-faced aristocrats. Aristocrats, not cats. Mahogany framed double doors leading into the foyer of the main hall are set with paned, panes of stained glass. Does any uh, Do any of the portraitures uh, have a corresponding sigil in the painting itself? Negative. There is no additional uh, anything here. Uh, I'm going to say, just because that's a good question, I'm going to say that the emblazoned uh, windmill on the shield is also in the, the panes of stained glass. So you do see a, a, you do see a windmill on, on, on both of those things. Uh, the stained glass is here in between these doors. Um. Um. This might be ill-advised, but can I go over to the paintings and like see if I can like tip each of them a little bit to see if I can look behind them? You can. They are still. It's a single pin at the top. You can look behind them. It is a wall. Is that what you were looking for? I mean. <laughs> I would like to specifically check for any bulges in the backing of the paintings uh, and or any seams to the wall. Uh, there does not appear to be either of those things. It appears they are just simply... I don't have any further information on that. I would love to make something up right now and st stick something extra in there. Um... <laughs> But that is not listed, so I am not going to say it. I am Autumn of the Gallows. I uh, <laughs> am humbly request entry into your homes, I say to the paintings. The, the paintings remain stony-faced. Much obliged. Thank you. Can I hear this from the other room? Say it again. Can I hear this from the other room? You can, in fact. Uh, let's start this whole role-playing thing. Um, you... Uh, Chamoske and Dostoff, you hear, and your dog, you now have a dog, who is Chomachomo, is that right? Yes, Chomachomo, you hear uh, voices coming on, uh, coming from the other side of the door. Now you have recognized, I'm going to, I'm going to set this, this, the, the tone for you, so to speak, arf, 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 uh, that you have experienced death countless times coming through being stuck in a loop. Um, if I remember correctly, Dostoff, you had a, 
uh, what's it called? A, uh, a flaw that once you, once you start a, a quest, you have to fucking finish it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to run with that and say that you have continuously come back to the same house to die over and over again. Do you have memories of it? You have every memory. You, in fact, remember every single time you've died. At this point, I should also include some sort of, like, madness points, which sounds fucking awesome, um, but we're going to just... Unless you are have the mechanics ready to go, I don't think you need to start introducing Cthulhu stuff into this. <laughs> I don't have the mechanics. There is stuff in here on madness. I have not yet explored that and how to incorporate that. Working on it. Um... I mean, we're not in Barovia yet, so maybe the madness doesn't happen yet. <laughs> you, this is a this is a wonderful thing to think about. Not recognizing that you've already transported yourself through said "quote unquote" ancient gateway into Barovia, one would not expect Fucking that you Vistani. are. Huh? <laughs> Fucking Vistani. Fucking Vistani. Every time, every day, it's like this with you guys. I mean, come on. I got a kitty back there. Hi. Um, but, uh, Dostoth, you do in fact hear some voices coming from the other side of this doorway. What do you do? I'm going to go ahead and kick the door open and say, let's do it again. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Better. <laughs> um, headphones or microphone? Oh, I it, it okay. turned the audio on the other one back on. Okay, I can still hear you both about the same. That's good. Yeah, so you kick this fucking door open. You see two other two other ind individuals, a female bird and uh, a female dwarf on the other side, staring, talking to these stony-faced aristocrat paintings, aristocratic paintings. And at that sudden kicking through the door, I basically crouch down into a ready position and swing my mace out with both hands. That sounds like an attack to me. No, it's a defensive maneuver. <laughs> da -da 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 defense, get that ball. <laughs> <laughs> Tag to dust off. How do you react to this position? Permission to enter granted. Come on. What? Say it again. Said permission to enter granted. Bring it on. Ah. Yeah, you're gonna have to speak to your what is that, your right? You'll have to speak to your right. I will ready my weapon and shield and get ready for combat. Yes. Don't do that. <laughs> Be ye friend or foe. Depends where your allegiances lie. Boop it a beppy. A boop it a beppy. This dog comes running over and starts licking the bird. Dog rolling to lick you. <laughs> it's all, it's a critical lick. I agree. We are very much aligned with Bucket of Peppy. <laughs> we like family style meals. Um. Does Chamoske or Dostoff? Do you want to infer what you've been experiencing in these here parts? Yeah, it's like. Have you ever read the book Groundhog Day by Cal Janet? <laughs> It's a lot like that. Yeah. <laughs> what is the legend of Grandma's Day? <laughs> We've been living the same day over and over and over again. Being killed by these specters ever since we entered this house. Over and over and over again. Um, can I do a perception on their weapons to see whether or not they're silvered? Uh, you can. I'm unsure if your weapons are the two of your weapons sheathed at the moment. Oh no, mine's out and ready to party. Yours is out and ready. Looking directly at this thing, it would appear that this weapon... What do you have? A sword? A long sword? Uh, Warhammer. Warhammer. Uh, this warmer, Warhammer has in fact been uh, dipped in silver. Sheathed in silver. Alright, in which case I just sort of... I ease up a little bit, stand tall, s sort of do a spin of my own mace, and go, John Smith? <laughs> <laughs> Don't 
stop. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's no, stop. it's I Frank. Your, I like your sword, but <laughs> werewolves kidnapping children. <laughs> yes, we're looking for them. Do you know the werewolves? Don't stop, Chomsky. Werewolves aren't real. We were sent to find you. By who? We were sent to find you. I'm an asshole, so like, I doubt anybody would want to find you. Some yeah. suckers in Waterdeep asked us to go take a look at you. They felt bad. Uh, you record. Oh. You you remember his name was uh. Something. I went too far back. Uh, I remember something hound. It's something long. Don't it. It's in there somewhere. I've lost the page. I'm sorry. Something hound. Yes, you do. You all, you all recognize this. A couple of humans. Very formal with each other's names. <laughs> I think we might be here on the same mission. Well, I mean, we were here to find you. We're here to join your mission. Well, well you know, this is the first new thing that's happened in the last, I don't know, how long? It's been about a so, day. I feel like things have been thing over. <laughs> over and over and over again. So how many times have you guys died? Oh, we haven't died yet. At least uh, I haven't died yet. How, how many times have you died? Uh, uh bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call you bang bang or don't ask how much you've died. Bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you. You're one of those people. Ask a question, they say, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good response. Uh, Tone, I'm sorry, Chamoske, you did in fact have the right idea, though. You were on the right path. This is in fact the first time that something is different. And like it was said in Groundhog's Day, different is always good. Yeah. How would you like to proceed? So we can go back to that room where we always die in. I'll show you how we die. Is that what you want to do? That's a way to avoid death. I know. Don't set any statues on fire. They don't like it. It happens. Have you been setting the statues on fire every time? Yes. Their intelligence scores are not high. <laughs> <laughs> we tried different tactics every time to try to beat the specter, but it, it's not. It doesn't go well. Don't Have you tried that. different tactics for not lighting the statues on fire? <laughs> no. <laughs> Doi. Well, obviously, we, we get to this point by lighting the statues on fire. We have to do that. Why wouldn't you do that? We can overtake them eventually. Yeah. We, we got to right you know? Um. Actually. I see what you're doing there. Don't do that. <laughs> I forgot to do a little something. I'm going to apologize now, and I'm going to take a step back. Uh, this is a great time for everybody to recite their backstories once again. Uh, Chamoske continues to talk about fire like it's his life's blood. This is a great point for you to describe this if you would like. Um, okay. Let's start with Chamoske. Why are you talking about fire, you son of a bitch? What do you look like? Does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> Describe yourself to me. I'm a human. What's your ASL? <laughs> well, you're not a pug in a spacesuit. Yeah. No, I'm not. That's, that's my dog. I found his dog. That's Chomo Chomo. Chomo Chomo. Um, I'm a five foot three wizard. 
I thought you said you were a sorcerer. He did. Are you a sorcerer or wizard? Sorcerer, my bad. Sorcerer. What do you look like? What do I see? You have five foot three. You know, very feminine looking man. Ooh, fanboy. Yeah. It's Metro. It's Metro. Like a I can't grow a beard no matter how hard it is. So Thomas from the Dresden Files. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. That. It's always a work in progress. Do you have blue eyes or gray eyes? <laughs> <laughs> well, it says that they're blue, but I would have said it I wanted gray. <laughs> Very pale human. Uh, let's going backward. Uh, going to Dostoff. Please describe yourself in elaborate detail, if and you would, to these two individuals. Standing in front of you is a nice five foot eight, stout, uh, green skinned turtle. No, no real clothing, just a just a shell and a smile. Um, and then. A little bit about myself is uh, he's definitely not from around here, so he travels from far and wide. And uh, I don't know how much do we like. Do you want me to just read my background? <laughs> well, I was trying to write this shit down last time, and I'm a really bad note taker, and so I wrote down priest slash temple, and that was it. <laughs> Are you a fighter? Yes, I'm a fighter. Oh. I'm not sure where you got pre temple from. I, it's something uh, you said last time. I don't remember. So we're bullet timing for a moment to speak to the GM about ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so I travel from faraway lands. Uh, I definitely have a, 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 a distinguishable accent because I. I'm nowhere from the area, so I sound completely different than anyone in the area. Show me the accent. I am. This is my accent. <laughs> wow. This is my happy accent. It's just my happy face. I speak awkward, so blub, blub, girl, girl, girl. <laughs> um, so look at him. Is it mirrored? Why? Oh, it is. Weird. Ow. Why are you poking my left cheek? Because on my screen it's not mirrored, so I'm poking you. But then on your screen it comes <laughs> from the other side. <laughs> Sorry. Easily amused. That's weird. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, um So you just look like a tortoise standing in front of me? Yeah, I'm a large turtle. You got no clothes on, just a shell. Just a shell. Are you angry looking? Are you green? I am green. Do you smell? I smell a little. I smell fishy. That gross. Kind of like a, kind of like a pond. <laughs> Comforting pond. So you're a turtle, not a tortoise. I don't know. It's, a <laughs> it's one of the Galapagos ones. He has a really long neck. Well, I guess I wouldn't smell like a turtle. Or, yeah, it's, it's a turtle. One would assume well, that you smell. bathe on occasion, right? Oh. Tortoises don't. Yeah. <laughs> Our pet tortoise, maybe once a week. Probably smell like dust from all the house. All right. Um, <laughs> Autumn putting away her uh, mace, I think it was. All right, so... What's going on with you? What, what you see is a, a very average size, stocky, uh, a little bit lighter than, your, uh, than a regularly stocky dwarf, about... Four foot, uh, about four and a half feet tall, um, and for the most part, I look very average, except for a few key things. One, I adjust my hat, which is a very kind of odd hat for the time, given the fact that I'm wearing scale mail. You know, uh, so just sort of this weird kind of belted uh, uh, hat on top. But also, both my ears have little cuts in the uh, little cuts in the tips of them there's some definite scar uh, there's a few scars and i'm decked 
in a lot of very weird accoutrement. You see flasks of clear liquid. You see some steaks. You see a hand. Uh, uh, you see a hand um, crossbow and some bolts for it. I'm. I, I look like I'm prepared for some very weird situations, and ultimately that's because I started my life training as a paranormal witch hunter. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, quite frankly, uh, the chance to jump at confronting werewolves is very much my bag, although I am still... I've been through a few things, I've seen some stuff, I have some spiritual scars as well, Ooh. of friends that I've lost and mentors who are a little bit overbearing, but, uh, otherwise, uh, this may be one of my early missions. But I'm as ready as I think I can be, and far too overly confident to think otherwise. <laughs> How old are you? Auburn hair. Um, I'm about 135 years old, oh. and uh, my I have a generally tawny complexion, so it's not so it's wind burnt of sorts, and uh, um, basically a burnt oak, a burnt <clears throat> ochre eyeball. Uh, I people's things <laughs> the things in the orbs of my face <laughs> <laughs> whatever those things may be <laughs> so this one's gonna be extra awkward rebel oh yeah and i've got oh. a shield on my back and a mace on my uh, and a mace that i'm putting away <laughs> she uh Why am i extra awkward because <laughs> only you only repeat things so here we go bing bong Bing bong, I'm Rebel. I'm a Kenku bard, so I can only say things if I can mimic them. Um, Who said I, that to you? <laughs> it was actually done to the Kenkus uh, oh. as a punishment oh. for them trying to like rebel against, I can't remember the whole lore behind it, but they were also taking away their ability to fly. Oh. Yeah. That's shit. So I can't fly, yeah. Um, but I look like a, a tiny raven. I'm about four feet tall. Um, I would, what you would say in like Kenku years, a teen, but I'm probably about 10 years old. Um, and I was raised at like a high school, so I just know high school cheers and football quotes. <laughs> it's going to be bring it on. For the entirety of this thing? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I was thinking of that or like musicals. Maybe oh, I yeah. You get some Lim Is in there? Boss. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for the be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pitch black. I've got a slight bluish purple sheen to me. Um, and I've got a lute and a little drum. You know, like a Snare uh, drum? No, is that what it's called? Bongo they, drum? No, that they have like. A... Yeah, snare drum. Is it a snare drum? I don't know. Like in a in a in a drum line. Yes. Yeah, I think that's snare. Is that right? I don't know, but that one. Okay. I'm gonna side with Johnny on this one. Sorry, Dostoff. I'm gonna I'm gonna side with Dostoff on this one. Um. Um. I don't know much more about myself. So upon seeing that they are friendly, I was put my weapon away and gladly, friendly greet them because I'm, I like meeting new people. I'm a traveler. That's what I do. It's a traveler. You come from a far off distant land. One it's... of those people. Yes. Um... I am one of those people. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our uh, house, I guess, since we kind of inherited it and we can't leave. Over and over and over again. Even if we die, we cannot leave. We are stuck here. Um, being that this is uh, the first thing that has been different in Chamoske and Dostoth's uh, experience in this household, um, I'm going to ask the meta question instead. Do you want to progress into this household? Or do you want to leave? Uh, 
I will progress into the household. <laughs> well spoken. Chimosuke? I just found a secret note. Why didn't we ever think of that? Why didn't we just leave? <laughs> I mean, this joint's not going to light itself on fire. I mean, come on. Uh, what do the two new individuals say? Autumn and... Oops, I forgot your name already. Rebel. Wait, what? I, I'm actually going to take a moment and, like, sort of... Things kind of click, and I'm actually going to see what happens if I try to open the door back to the outside. It... It does open. So you move yourself back down to the front door. You open it up. It creaks. It does one of those noises. Um, you look out and the the fog has uh, thickened in a, in a sense, so to speak. Um, as much as the of the road and the opposite side of the road, the trees on the opposite side of the road, everything seems to be even... Answer. Yes, thank you. Yeah, the whole it the, the the fog is more dense than it once was, almost encapsulating you with inside this house, enveloping you within this house. Is there a rock nearby? There are many stones at your feet outside. Uh, can I pick up one of the stones and throw it into the fog at a high angle? Yes. Uh, you do that. You hear it land. Um, you hit, here it hits some branches and land on the opposite side, uh, in the dirt. Of the fog? Opposite side of what? Opposite side of the road. You thought you threw it high, it went over the road, landed, uh, hit a, hit a tree branch, and finally settled on the ground. You can hear the thud that the stone makes in dirt. So it doesn't come flying back out of the fog at us? <laughs> no, it, the fog does not attack you. That would have been cooler. It would have been rad. I, I, I was actually specifically trying to see whether or not there was anything specifically preventing us from leaving. Some kind of an enchantment that would have cycled us back to the place. <laughs> um, yes. Speaking from the meta. Sure. Oh, sorry. Why Say not? Walk into the fog. You walk into the fog. You depart yourself. You split the party. You depart into the fog. You walk to the other side of the road, into the trees. You continue to walk 10 or so feet into the trees, and then you see a road up ahead of you, and that is exactly the same road you just left. You don't remember turning around, but the fog, in, so in fact, did turn you around. Directly ahead of you now is a the, the ghosty-looking house through the fog. Wander back up. Leaving isn't an option. <laughs> <laughs> so, burning statues. Burning statues, he says. Yes, so let's... Met really friendly ghosts that were um, the rem remaining spirits of uh, two children that lived here. Uh, and I would just continue to divulge the entire story of the house and Yes. Weird, weird little hidden figures and pictures in all of the decor, the paintings that we found. Um, best we can tell is this house belonged to pedophiles. <laughs> um, they liked children. And we found the remains of two children in the attic in a secret room followed a secret staircase down into a basement where they would perform rituals. And we laid their bones to rest and set their spirits free. There are still many, many bad things bumping in the night down there. I see. I never turned out an opportunity to strike down a monster. Wasn't this the first thing that was said? Yeah, Autumn said it. I love it. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can I ask a quick question? Oh, yes. Of, uh, of, the, uh, of, of the sorcerer. Uh, is it the burning, the light, the heat? What, what inspires you to burn the statue? I just want to see it burn because I just want to use my belt. I, I, get, I get itchy when I don't throw out a fire. 
I see. And the dog has nothing to do with it. We squished the dog, and it came back with us. Oh, poor Chomo <laughs> Chomo. You squished Over and over and over again? We only tried the once. It seemed kind of mean after that. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you squish the dog? We'll do that. It's I'd fucked like up. How many times we have reappeared at the entrance of this house, trapped here? Leaving isn't an option. <laughs> we will. I will find a way. Yeah, I'm beginning to call this place more South California. <laughs> One of those people, yes. Yes. <laughs> Remaining captured is not an option. I will have my freedom. So I am. <laughs> it's starting to grow on me like a moss, like a like a fungus. Um, I am going to lead you through this uh, fairly quickly, getting you back down to the basement, if you don't mind. Follow us to the uh, secret staircase. Oh. On your left. <laughs> Move it down the field. <laughs> uh, uh, Rebel in Autumn. The, the, the corpse that you found in um, near the gates along the way, uh, the, the hand was clutched in a way it, was, it appeared that it was holding something. Uh, these two individuals, Dostoff and Chamoske, had that letter. And it looks like that. If that worked. Did it pop up? Might and valor. I yes. am the burgomaster of Vararia, uh, Varovia. Send you honor with despair. <laughs> My adopted daughter, the fair Irina Koliana, has been these past nights bitten by a vampire. For over 400 years, this creature has drained the lifeblood of my people. Now, my dear Irina languishes and dies from an unholy wound caused by this vile beast. He has become too powerful to conquer. So I say to you, give us up for dead and encircle this land with the symbols of good. Let holy men call upon the power that the devil may be contained within the walls of weeping Barovia. Leave our sorrows to our graves and save the world from this evil fate of ours. There is much wealth entrapped in this community. Return for your reward after we are all departed for a better life. Kolion Indirovich, Virgo Master. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally to that... Um, they also found on the, I think it was the second or third floor, I can't actually remember which one it was, uh, there was a skeleton hanging out of a, uh, of a chest. They could not figure out how it died, but it was most definitely dead because it was a person that is now a skeleton. Um, you remember that thing? Yeah. Uh, this was clutched in its hand. Did that actually appear for you? Okay. My most pathetic servant. <laughs> I am not the Messiah sent to you by the dark powers of this land. I have not come to lead you on a path to immortality. However many souls you have bled on your hidden altar, however many visitors you have tortured in your dungeon, know that you are not the ones who brought me to this beautiful land. You are but worms writhing in the earth. You say that you are cursed? Your fortune spent? You abandoned love for madness, took solaces in the bosom of another woman, and sired a stillborn son. Cursed by darkness? Of that I have no doubt. Save you from the wretchedness? I think not. Much prefer you as you are, your dreadlord and master, Strahd von Zarevich. <laughs> I would like thank you very much, Arthur. You are fantastic. Uh, I would like to point out that at one point, because this is a horror uh, a horror genre game, and I'm not very good at horror. I wanted to make it a comedy instead, so I thought about turning Zarovich into Zarovic and making it, you know, something along the lines of Weird Al. Weird Strahd Zarovic. Weird Strahd Zarovic. <laughs> <laughs> um, in so addition to, oh, sorry, Johnny, go ahead. 
I'd now like to take them to the uh, skeleton in that chest. Just be like, we found this guy. Now, where was and... that? Hold on a minute here. <gasps> what if I just quote Weird Al songs? <laughs> DM would love you. <laughs> Can anyone do this? I've got it. Yeah, baby, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I would also like to introduce them to the um, the nursemaid. Do you remember which room you found uh, that letter um, in? Oh, it must have been it must have been this room on the second floor. Somewhere over here. Do you not have a map layer with extra DM notes? I am a very poor note taker. <laughs> As unfortunate as that is, um, I'm going to get you to that point. Uh, this main hall area that you are currently in on the first floor is described as such. A wide hall runs the width of the house with a marble black fireplace in one end and a sweeping red marble staircase on the other. Uh, mounted on the wall high above the fireplace is a long sword. It is no longer there. It is actually in Dostuth's possession. Uh, it has a windmill cameo worked into the hilt. Uh, the wood paneled walls are ornately sculpted with vines, flowers, nymphs, and satyrs. What they just, uh, Dostoth, I think it was Dostoth that pointed it out er before. Sometimes there's some weird shit you can find in the st in the panels. Um, this, as well Is as there the. Any celestial or abyssal writing. Say it again. Is there any celestial or abyssal right? There is not celestial nor abyssal. Um, the sculpted vines, flowers, nymphs, and satyrs along with them. There are also serpents and skulls inconspicuously woven into the wall design. Uh, moving up the spiral staircase to the second floor. Oops, it didn't work the second time. Up there. What is that? Six. Do, 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 do. The upper hall. Unlit oil lamps are mounted on the walls of this elegant hall. Hanging above the mantelpiece is a wood-framed portrait of the Durst family. Excuse me. Are you telling me that you have burnt a statue and you didn't light the torches? <laughs> <laughs> there was other opportunity that was not taken. Uh, Gustav and Elizabeth Dur Oh. Say it again, Tone. If you notice, there is a suit of armor round about here-ish that looks very similar to one suit of armor sucking the other suit of armors downstairs. However it was described last time, it's awkwardly placed and hilarity ensues. Uh, standing, we're, we're going to get into those now. Standing suits of armor flank the wooden doors on the east and west walls of this. Uh, each suit is... Each suit of armor clutches a spear and has a visored helm shaped like a wolf's head. The doors are carved with dancing youths. Uh, Dostoth, once again, or maybe it was Chmoske, I'm not entirely sure who made the perception roll, realized that along with these dancing youths, these dancing youths are not in fact dancing. Um, reveals that the youths, are, the youths are, aren't really dancing, but fighting off swarms of bees and bats. The red marble staircase that started on the fur for oh my god sorry hold on the red marble staircase that started on the first floor continues its upward spiral a cold draft can be felt coming down the steps uh, moving on to the third floor unless somebody wants to fuck with these uh, suits of armor anymore this is the weirdest way to get to the basement ever it is <laughs> up doesn't mean down I don't understand. So way up here at the top in, which apparently you cannot see, is actually my room 11, which I go over here for. Uh, climbing the red marble staircase, it is to its full height. You come to a dusty balcony with a suit of black plate armor standing against one wall, draped in cobwebs. Uh, oil lamps are mounted on the dark or ugh, on the oak paneled walls which are carved with woodland scenes of trees falling, le uh, trees falling leaves, and tiny critters. Uh, I believe one of you also made the perception check last time. 
that the if you really look at these trees, there is actually a corpse hanging from one of these, and worms are bursting out of it. That is gross. Sexy. It's sexy, and he knows it. What is that third floor? And we're just making like our way toward the old paused uh, fairy time stories. Say it again. One more time. Just like me old house fairy time story. Yeah. <laughs> um, along the way, they also describe the following to you. This was uh oh, what the fuck was this? This was this was in one of the rooms. I think it's on the third floor. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, this was some backstory that that the two of you that uh, Autumn and rebel you do not know yet so i'm gonna i'm just gonna go ahead and recite this to you and catch y'all up you ready for this here we go when strad von zarevic conquered barovia the durst family was an upper class household of minor noble descent that managed to retain power under the new regime by cozying up to the new lord in the castle ravenloft as time went on, however, Mr. and Mrs. Durst were affected by the darkness that swept over Barovia. Mr. Durst became solemn and depressed, while Mrs. Durst felt herself grow older and uglier. In search of the brightness that had escaped his life, Mr. Durst turned his children's turned to his children's nursemaid, a young and single woman by the name of Margaret. Flattered by the older and wealthier man's charms, Margaret enjoyed a brief affair with him that accidentally ended in her pregnancy. She was as as she watched Margaret's belly swell with her husband's bastard child, Mrs. Durst lost herself in jealousy and hatred. Convinced that her increasing age was responsible for her husband's adultery, uh Drawing on the tales of Count Strahd von Zarevich's eldritch powers, Mrs. Durst found, founded a cult of... Oh my god, hold on a minute. I have to swallow. Uh, Mrs. Durst founded a cult dedicated to the secrets of immortality and youth. Mrs. Mr. Durst soon found himself involved and complicit as well. Uh, the cult would lure travelers, neighbors, and servants alike into the Durst household, mo murdering them in a ritual sacrifice on the altar in the basement in an effort to draw force their life, draw forth their life force. However, nothing worked. Obviously, I'm going to take a step out here. Obviously, having two individuals continuously die in your household is providing the uh, the life force that is needed to be maintained. Each time Mr. and Mrs. Durth performed these sacrifices, they locked their children in the rooms in a sincere attempt to protect them. However, soon after Margaret's bastard son, Walter, was born, Mrs. Durst lost her patience completely. She lost her shit, so to speak. On one stormy night... Did she check the toilet? Say it again? Did she check the toilet? She did not. She missed. One stormy night, Mrs. Durst murdered Margaret in her sleep and took Walter down into the basement. Standing alone before the altar, she chanted an unholy prayer and sacrificed the infant upon its stone surface. This act of infanticide attracted the notice of a dark power, Norganus, the finger of the oblivion. Amused by the depravity and desperation of the Dursts, Norganus granted the Dursts and their cultists immortality they so craved by turning them into ghouls and ghasts. Mr. Durst, upon seeing his wife, seeing what his wife had done, was overcome with guilt and hanged himself in the basement. Mrs. Durst soon lost herself to madness and lost herself into the cat locked, lost herself in the catacombs of the dungeon beneath. With no adults left to remember them, Rose and Thorn, the two children that you're unfortunately not going to be able to meet, starved to death in their room. Mrs. Durst's final sacrifice, so perverted and mal malignant in its nature, transformed Walter himself. This act of betrayal twisted and broke the infant's soul and body, morphing Walter's spirit and flesh into an enormous, horrible monster that anchored Norganus, Norganus's curse to the very foundation of the Durst house. Holy shit, that was a lot. I apologize. Wait for it. 
for those taking notes, I hope you wrote quickly. <laughs> uh, where There's... are you? Third floor. Morganus. Uh, broke the kid. <laughs> <laughs> Some real fucked up shit happened in this household. And then trap the these two other individuals here as well. Starve the kiddos. Um, so at this point, uh, assuming that in some way, shape, or form, the story has sort of been imparted to us on this tour on the way to the uh, uh, to the upstairs basement, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, my uh, uh, compulsion is kind of going to get to me, and I'm going to run back down two flights of steps and start lighting all of the oil lamps. Oh. You do. And once I'm back up to the top I'll, uh, uh, with everybody else, I'll light the two that are, I'll light the ones that are there in that uh, that portion of the hallway as well. I would add in some extra oil lamps uh, that appear to be lit, but I would have to go through and do it manually. And let's just say for shits and giggles that every oil lamp that is able to be lit has been lit, and the house looks brighter and warmer and more cozy. Are you scared of the dark, are you? No, 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 just, uh, if the husband was looking for, uh, to preserve the light, maybe if we bring the light to him, we might get the chance to talk to him. Who knows? Hmm. Paranormal is weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> Paranormal is weird shit. As you reach the top, you also light those two oil lamps that are mounted on the oak-paneled walls. Uh, tiny creatures, blah, blah, blah. You notice that here... I'm pointing out here. Uh, there is a secret door that Chamoske and Dostoff lead you into. Uh, the cobwebs that were there are not there any longer because everybody's walked through them a billion times and gone to their death, which leads up to these sets of stairs over yonder, which is 16 for me. Uh, this bare hall is choked with dust and cobwebs. Uh, you recognize that this joint up here is where the, the children were. And yet, if you were to walk yourself... Oh, where the hell? Not there. Over here. You walk to the end of this hallway here, enter in, and you find... Matter of fact, we're just going to do one of these. Check this out. I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, I like that, though. There we go. Layer. Token layer. See that S? Dink. There's an S right there. Guess what? There was another secret door right there that was already founded by these two individuals. That is 21. Secret stairs. A narrow spiral staircase made of creaky wood uh, is contained within a five-foot wide shaft of mortared stone and st uh, that starts in the attic and descends 50 feet into the dungeons level into the dungeon level passing through the lower levels of the house it makes it, it makes a descent thick cobwebs fill the shaft and reduce visibility in the staircase by two five feet now this was the first milestone getting to this staircase was your first milestone if you have not already leveled up to two please do so now and then I change everything. Do, 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 do. Over there. Ooh. Upon entering the basement, I immediately pull up my shield, pull out my hammer. Okay, now, now's the hairy part. Here we go, motherfucker. Um. I know you Can can't you drag our characters from the previous chapter. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, they are on that page forever. We have to do it again. Um, I'm going to highlight this number 22 here. Layer token. Did you see a 22 pop up in this uh, toward the top of it? Yes. Okay. That is the stairs you just ascended. Oh, I am. Okay. Um, characters. There we go. There's one. Everybody drag your characters out. Here we go. Um, a lot of this has already been explored, but we're going to go step by step. I need you to know this first. 
the dungeon features. This dungeon, this dungeon level underneath the death house is carved out of earth, clay, and rock. The tunnels are four feet wide by seven feet high with timber braces at five foot intervals. Rooms are eight feet tall and supported by thick wooden posts with cross beams. The only exception is room 38, which is way down at the bottom. Uh, and doesn't really matter here. Characters without dark vision must provide their own light sources as this dungeon is unlit. Um, you can also see century-old human footprints in the earthen floor leading in every which way. Along, I'm also going to include, along with these two into Chamosuke's and, and Dostoff's footprints leading in the same direction every single time. 22. Is this place still full of cobwebs? Or is it just in the actual shaft itself? One would assume that if they were trapped within the same cycle that the cobwebs would come back every time. Let's let's talk about a plot hole. <laughs> I'm really good at making those, and I think I just created so, another one. So actual reasoning for this is more to do with the fact that I wanted to do a very weird thing where I was going to start lighting up 10-foot sections of cobwebs, because I just assumed they were billowing and draping, and I just wanted to use my light cantrip on it. Use your light cantrip. <laughs> I will allow this, because I don't have dark vision. <laughs> So yeah, basically, I, I'm assuming this is like Indiana Jones style draping down oh, style yeah. cobwebs. Yeah, it's thick. The cobwebs are thick. So yeah, basically, I I basically 